Hey guys, so I, um, someone on my Discord kind of asked me if I could explain how do you do a request on one page and tell React to redirect with the data that you got back on your form submission and display that on another page, right? So he's using React Router version 6 and Create React App. So I'm, kind of, I'm going to kind of walk you through how I will kind of do that, but there's a lot of ways you could achieve it. So right here we have a button, and when you click it, it it does like a form submission behind the scenes to a backend API and that backend API returns some data, right? So the data has name and Bob. So the question that we're trying to do is how do you display name and Bob on a new route? Like we want this thing to go to a new success page after we do the submission, right? And we want to display name and Bob here. And we got to figure out how to kind of share state in between our components. So if you look at our application, let me just go to the index real quick. You notice here in the index, we have a browser router set up. I'm just using React Router DOM here. And if I look at the app, we have a route set up. This is how you do it with React Router version 6. You set up a routes component, and inside of that, you have nested children. And these children, we have two paths. We have the home page, which showed that button. And then we have a success page, which shows a success component. Um, so the idea is on this page, we want to somehow learn how to display, I'm going to say like display the results from the form submission. Not type right now. So that's kind of what we're trying to do, right? We need to figure out how do we get the state from one component and display it here. So let's try to figure that out. Go back to app. We have another by component. Okay, so there's the by component and the success component. If we look at the by component, all this is doing is displaying a button that you saw on that previous page. And when you click it, it does a behind the scenes request to a backend. We get a promise and we get some data back, okay? So the question that he's asking is like, how do I display that data on another page? Well, there's a couple ways you can do it. The easiest way would just be doing prop drilling and using some type of higher level state, right? So I'm gonna show you that because I think it makes more sense for a beginner. So somehow you need to take this data and store it somewhere so that both of these things know about it, right? Let me just rename this a response. Uh, it might make a little bit more sense. So let's go back to the main app. And again, like we need a higher level piece of state so we can have the buy component when it's done getting the data. It can set some state at a higher level so that this success component can actually display it, all right? And again, this is just one way you can do it. There's other ways you can do it with like context or Redux or any type of state management library, but I'm showing you the easiest way so inside of the app component, again, at a higher level, and what I mean by higher level, I mean like a component that's higher than buy and success. You can declare a new state variable. So I'm going to say const response and set response is equal to use state. And let me go ahead and auto import that. And also I'm going to set this equal to an empty object for right now. So starting with the buy component, we need the buy component when we actually get the data back we need to set it in that state that was defined at a higher level, right? So what we could do is we could pass the setter here into by, just like this. And now the by component has a method it can call to set this state variable. All right, so let's go into the by component and we're going to pass that in as props. Again, this is how you kind of pass in props. I'm just doing ES6 um, object destructuring, like this could be props. And then on this, you have a method called um, set response. So I guess I could do props.setResponse is equal to response. Okay, but typically we do a shorthand for props like this in React. So I'm just going to do this. And that makes more sense. So you can also clean this up even more. Like this is a promise chain. So I could just call the function there and that's going to do the exact same code that I just had. So I want to show you how this is working. Let me go ahead and load up my React components. This is a really interesting um, extension to have installed, especially if you're trying to understand how React works. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this page because I don't think it actually found the component. I'm going to click on app here, and it's going to show us the state of that thing that we created, the response state. So I'm going to click on submit, and you'll notice that this thing now has cached the value of age and Bob, and we can use that to display it on another page. So let's go back to the code, and I'm going to show you the next steps, right? So if you go on the app, the next step is how do we get that data displaying on the success page, right? Well, you could just pass in the response here as another prop. 
we just did the same pattern, so it should make sense. So if I go into this component, this can now take in the response object. And what we could do is we could print out response.name. And I'll say like name colon, and we could also say age colon response.age. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Now that when we click the buy button, it's going to set state. And that state is going to be passed down into the success component. But there's one piece of the puzzle we haven't yet implemented, and that is how do you automatically reroute the user to that success page, right? So we're using a React router. And I'm, I'm actually going to just do this. If you get really good at promise chaining, you can just do stuff like this. So we want to be able to basically redirect the user to that success page. So if I go back to app, remember we have a path called success. And when you go to it, it displays the success component, and it's going to be passed down that top level state that we kind of declared here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do um, in the by component. If you're using React Router 6, I believe there is a router object called use router. Let me go back to the docs and just verify that. I think it's called, oh, it's called use navigate. My bad. So I'm going to say use. Use navigate. I believe they renamed this. And I'm going to say navigate is a function that we can call. So let's just you know, auto import this from React Router DOM. And now we can actually invoke this. I'm going to say go to the success page. So if I click on that buy button now, it's going to set that response on a, a higher level state. It's going to navigate to the success component. Our React Router is going to see that, hey, someone's trying to navigate to success. It's going to create this component and pass in that data that we cached here and it should display it, right? So let's go ahead and click on that buy button, or I'm sorry, click on the submit button, and notice that we've now gone to the success page. We are displaying Bob and also 42. So that is how you can kind of take one piece of state from one component and display it on another view or route if you're using create React app with React Router 6, okay? Now this, this paradigm of taking state and sharing it is super important and this is where you get into whole the whole state management discussion of react because it's very often that you need to have one piece of state that's shared amongst your pages or shared amongst your applications and sometimes the easiest way to pass it is by using state management you could have done different ways too i could have done a query string here and just put that data here in the query string i could have stored it in local storage i could have stored it in some type of other type of data store that's on the browser but honestly, this is probably the easiest approach using uh, elevating the state and then doing some type of prop drilling. You could use context as well, um, but we're kind of achieving the exact same thing with what we did with this use state hook. So honestly, this is how I would do it until it doesn't work for your application or work for your needs. And then I would probably bring in context if you really want to use it. Anyway, I hope I explained this well to you. Be sure to join my Discord if you have a question you want me to ask me, or if you have a question you want to ask me, I like to make videos for my subscribers to try to help them understand certain bugs and stuff and understand how stuff works in React and JavaScript, whatever. So be sure to stick around and happy coding.